everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Nina, and here at this channel we talk all about mental health, personal development, and psychology. And today we're talking all about dreams. Now, if you're anything like me, you find this to be an incredibly fascinating topic to study. And I think in the realm of psychology, ever since Sigmund Freud really drew attention to how potentially important dreams can be, there's been quite a lot of interest in this area. Really, the question of why people dream is something that has perplexed scientists and philosophers for thousands of years, but it's only been kind of recently that it's been the subject of true scientific study. And some of the most interesting research in this area was conducted by J. Allen Hobson, who we're going to be talking about today. Now, he was able to identify five basic characteristics of dreams. And this research can be found in his 1988 book called The Dreaming Brain, which I absolutely suggest because today we're really only going to be scratching the surface of all he discusses. But I found it incredibly interesting because we tend to feel like dreams are so personal to us that it seems almost strange to consider that other people are having similar experiences. So while the actual content of the dream is, of course, unique to us, Dr. Hobson did find that there were five distinct things that all dreams seem to have in common. The first thing is that dreams feature intense emotions. Even though our dream sequences aren't actually happening, we can still experience intense emotions. So for example, we may dream that someone's chasing us down an alleyway and feel genuinely terrified, or we could be dreaming that we are taking a test and we can't remember any of the answers and we feel embarrassed or humiliated. And these emotions can be so strong that it actually wakes us up out of the dream. And Dr. Hobson found that the three most common emotions that people experience in dreams are fear, anxiety, and surprise. The second thing he found is that dreams are disorganized and illogical. When we're sleeping, parts of our conscious brain actually shut off, which allows for these kind of fantastical thought processes to just go wild and allows for very illogical and disorganized scenarios to take place that when we wake up, we don't understand. They really make no sense to us. Because dreams aren't restricted to the natural laws of the universe, pretty much anything is possible. We can time travel, we could talk to animals, we could be at a dinner party with someone from kindergarten right alongside with Kurt Cobain, we could switch scenarios very quickly, we could be in another time and place entirely within a matter of seconds. There's really no limits. Because we dream in pictures, what's really happening is our brain is taking all the little snapshots that it's taken of our life and simply rearranging them in a way that maybe we can't understand. And something that I find incredibly interesting about dreams is that we can only dream about faces that we've actually seen before. And this is true even when we are dreaming about who we perceive to be strangers. The strangers in our dreams actually have faces of people that we have encountered in our past. Now, they don't have to be people that we necessarily know. It could be someone that we've even brushed by in a supermarket. Even when we are not paying attention, our unconscious mind is really pulling in all this sensory information. The third thing he found is that dream content is accepted without question. So when we're dreaming, our mind fully accepts any illogical or even bizarre characteristics of dreams because we are in such a powerful emotional state. We end up creating these strong emotions and perceptions in response to the dream, no matter how strange it is, because we can't apply logical thought to it. And we also can't overcome emotions when we are in our dream. But it's interesting because even though we fully accept all these unusual and odd circumstances while we are dreaming, the second we wake up, these same dreams seem very unusual and strange to us. They don't make sense because we are trying to apply rational thought to our dream world. The fourth thing he found is that dreams contain bizarre sensory experiences. I'm sure I'm not the only one that often feels like they are falling in their dreams, but we could also feel like we are flying or that we are unable to move or to control our body. We might even feel like we are running in slow motion, and this happens a lot when we dream that someone is chasing us. 
Not only are these strange sensory experiences very common in dreams, believe it or not, they are usually related directly to things that have happened to us when we were awake. So sometimes we don't always catch it because there's so much imagery in dreams that kind of disguise the meaning. We don't always see it, but usually there is a direct link between real life experiences and our dreams. And usually it's from something that happened a day or two before we had the dream, unless it's something that has really stuck with us, we could have reoccurring dreams that could bring up themes from years and years and years ago. I also want to point out that some of these experiences that we are dreaming about don't have to be from our real life. They can come from movies or television. It could simply be something that stuck with us or bothered us when we viewed it. And something that's kind of wonderful about dreams is that people who are blind are still able to see images when they are dreaming. And the fifth commonality he found is that dreams are difficult to remember. And I'm sure this is something that comes to you as absolutely no surprise and also something that probably frustrates you because I know it's something that frustrates me as well. And the problem here is that our brain has difficulty storing dreams in our short-term memory. So they get lost very, very quickly. In fact, research shows us that about 95% of our dreams are completely forgotten by the time we are fully woken up. I do want to point out, however, that it is possible to improve your dream recall. And you can do this by making it a conscious habit. And the way that I have done this is by keeping a dream journal. This is something that I keep by my bed. And the second I wake up, I write down all my dreams. I started doing this because it was a requirement by one of my professors. They wanted us to write down all, all of our dreams so that we could later analyze them. And at first, this was something that I had a lot of difficulty with. I couldn't remember my dreams at all. But with time, my brain got used to the fact that I wanted to have this information. And now I can recall many of my dreams fairly easily. In fact, I can remember a lot of very distinct details. And this is great information to have because it can give us a lot of information about what's going on in our unconscious mind. So there you have it. These are the five characteristics of dreams that J. Allen Hobson found in his research. But I definitely suggest that you go ahead and check out the full book, The Dreaming Brain, because today's video was really just the bare bones of his research, which is actually incredibly fascinating. Keep in mind also that we do spend about six years of our life dreaming, so it is a topic that is absolutely worth our time to learn a little more about. So as always, I truly hope you found today's video to be interesting and insightful. If you did, please like it, share it, and definitely become a subscriber if you are not one already. We want you to stay connected, and I truly hope the rest of your day is extraordinary.